I've gotten a lot of angry comments when I talk about this Wankel engine being a 1.3 liter. They say it's a 2.6 liter, or even more. So in today's video, we are going to settle once and for all what the displacement of this engine is and why. I love these rotary engines, but their displacement is sort of up for debate. So this video, we're gonna get all mathy and engineering. So if you love math and engineering, this video is for you. So let's start off with what is engine displacement? In a typical piston engine, the displacement is based off of the swept volume of the piston. If we have this swept volume here shown in red equaling one liter, and we have an engine with two cylinders, the total displacement would be multiplied by two to have a two liter engine. Now this same concept applies to rotary engines. So there are three parameters which describe the displacement of a rotary engine. The first one is the rotor center to tip distance that is known as R and that is 105 millimeters on these Wankel engines. The second one is eccentricity and that is given E which is the offset between the center of the lobe which goes in this rotor and the center of the crankshaft and that offset distance is 15 millimeters on a Wankel engine. The final one is the width of the rotor housing, and that's given as B, and that is 80 millimeters on these engines. So the formula for the stroke volume for a rotary engine is given as three root three times ERB. So this is the formula given in the 1981 book, Rotary Engine. So you can look into that further for the full proof of that, but we're just gonna use this formula for the sake of this video. So if we plug in all these numbers, we get 654.7 cc's as a stroke volume for one rotor. Because there are two rotors, we have to multiply that number by two to get 1309 cc's. So that's, that would be the displacement of the engine, right? So why are people saying this is a 2.6 liter instead? Now we enter the world of thermodynamics. The ideal thermodynamic cycle for a gasoline or spark ignition engine is known as the auto cycle. The auto cycle is most easily visualized on a pressure volume diagram, which oscillates between top dead center and bottom dead center. There are four states in the ideal auto cycle labeled one through four, with an additional state zero to represent the intake and exhaust. I could talk about this cycle for a very long time, but it's kind of beyond the scope of this video. So if you're really interested in learning more about the auto cycle, you can look it up on Wikipedia and read all about it. In a four cycle piston engine, the crankshaft rotates two full rotations during a complete thermodynamic cycle as shown. Now if we look at a rotary engine completing the auto cycle, three full thermodynamic cycles are completed with one full rotation of the rotor on each of the three faces. The eccentric shaft rotates three times the rate of the rotor, so we are left with three full thermodynamic cycles completed in three crankshaft rotations, resulting in one thermodynamic cycle completed in one full rotation of the crankshaft. So in comparing a piston engine to a rotary engine, some people double the displacement to compensate for this. Makes some more sense, right? But not all piston engines are four cycle engines. What about a two cycle engine? If we look at the auto cycle for a two-stroke engine, we can see that in a single full crankshaft rotation, a full thermodynamic cycle is completed. Now this is far more comparable to the Wankel engine, which is why in the past I've talked about rotary engines as being closer to a two-stroke than a four-stroke engine. Now that's a lot of information. So let's summarize. In a single rotor Wankel engine, it has a stroke volume of 654 cc's. We multiply that by two for the two rotors, we get a total of 1.3 liters. So that's the total stroke volume. In a piston engine, the stroke volume is measured as the displacement. So we'd say that the displacement is 1.3 liters like Mazda does. However, a four stroke engine, a full thermodynamic cycle is two rotations of the crankshaft. In a Wankel engine, it happens in only one rotation, which is why a lot of people will multiply that number again by two to get 2.6 liters. However, in a two-stroke engine, a full thermodynamic process is completed in one revolution of the crankshaft. So that's like a Wankel. And it doesn't matter whether you're measuring the displacement of a four-cycle versus a two-cycle engine, it's always based on stroke volume. So for that reason, I'm still inclined to call this a 1.3 liter engine. 
But that's just my opinion, I guess. I would love to hear your other thoughts and opinions in the comments below. And if you disagree with my argument, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. But I'm still going to be calling this a 1.3 liter. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it, and I'll see you in the next one.